Hi there everybody. Today we're going to talk a bit about sinkers or weights. I've noticed some of the new anglers often come to the beach and they use the wrong sinkers and the wrong applications. So I'm just going to explain the four basic sinkers to you and the applications today. Firstly, we call it the weed eater sinker. It's a, it's a, a grapnel with a plastic grapnel wire. This, this sinker has got specific applications. Um, I see a lot of guys often use them in the wrong application. For me, I like to use a sink in an area either on the beach or on the rock where, you, where the water is a little bit strong and you want the sinker to hold, but if need be, you can pull it, lift it and move it a little bit. The advantage I find with this sinker is when you're fishing in an area where there's a lot of small fish which pick at your bait and, and lift the sinker and drop it and lift the sinker and drop it, is that obviously these wires can't trip so when your sinker falls it holds again and the fish lifts it it will hold again so for me i like using this we call it pickers little fish when the pickers are around and your bait moves a lot i like using this and it sort of keeps you in the zone and you also don't drift away when the fish lifts the sinker disadvantages of the sinker it doesn't cast very far these thick plastic wires holds it back so it's not a long casting sinker and something else I don't really like about them is if you're fishing in reef and you actually hook a decent fish, they often tend to get stuck. Um, so you're fighting a fish and it gets stuck and you've got to force it out the bricks. So it's got a very specific application. And um, as I say, it's got its advantages and a few disadvantages. And the next sinker we're going to chat about is our teardrop or bottle sinker. Now this sinker... I like using in, in reefy areas when I fish for reef fish. Uh, firstly, it's got no obstruction, it's, it casts very well um, uh, due to its aerodynamics and no wires and anything attached to it, so it's a very good casting sinker. But one big disadvantage about this sinker is that it doesn't hold very well. So if you're fishing on a beach and there's a little bit of a sidewash, this is going to drag along the sand and not hold. So for me, I personally don't like using it on, on sandy beaches. I normally use it in the reefs. Um, the reason I like using this in reef is if I fish in an area with a lot of reef, I can throw and then wind the sinker slowly until I feel it knocks a rock and gets stuck there and wait there for the fish to pick me up. Because obviously your fish feed around the reefs normally. Another big advantage about this sinker fishing in reefs, because it's got no wires, there's no resistance when you reel in. So you can reel in very quickly get the sink on the surface and pull it over the rock so you don't get stuck while reeling in. So quite a specific application for us is refishing, getting the sinker to move. When you get a few bites or you're in the area where it's quiet, you can always just lift the sink a bit, wind it a bit till it bumps the next rock. And by doing that, you're covering more water and increasing your chances of catching a fish. Okay, our next sinker is a cone sinker. This is my, probably my favorite sinker for using on sandy beaches. As you guys can see, the shape is in a cone shape. And how the sinker works is you've got this sharp edge here. So your lines attach on this side. It'll line the sand and that little edge will get buried in the sand. So it's not easy for the sinker to wash away in a moderate sea. A very strong sea will definitely wash, but if it sees moderate to relatively strong, it'll hold. The edge will get buried in the sand. Um, the one big advantage about this sinker is the fact that number one, it casts very well. The shape of it, your bait sits behind it, it's nice and aerodynamic. And also, when fishing, a, for instance, a sand bank, you throw over the bank at the back, it lands, and this little edge catches in the sand, so it sits where you want it to sit. But if you want to work the bank and move it to the middle of the bank, for instance, just reel it a little bit, it will come and then stop where you want it to stop. And that allows you to fish a lot of water with one cast. You can every five minutes move it a little bit and it'll sit. It won't wash out of the zone where you want to fish. Now when it comes to reef fishing with these sinkers, I wouldn't suggest you use them in reefs. Um, there's two reasons for it. Number one, they get stuck very easily because of the shape. Every little crevice they get stuck in, so you're going to lose a lot of sinkers. And the second reason is it doesn't wind in very fast. It's got a lot of resistance on this flat edge, so if you're throwing over rock, and you want to wind in your sinker, it often gets stuck because it drags the water and it's quite slow. So this is not the type of sinker you want to throw in the reef. You're going to lose a lot of them. It's more a sandy beach type of sinker. 
for us uh, fishing for flatfish along the on the sandy beaches this is probably our favorite sinker to use firstly because of the fact that you can fish on sandy beaches with it and another advantage of this is it's got no spikes on it so if your flat fish moves across the sand towards your bait and goes over the sinker there's no sharp edges or spikes that can actually sort of distract the fish from your bait right then our final sinker here is the wire grapnel sinker i think this is the most commonly used sinker on south african coastline mostly due to its versatility um, for you guys who don't know how it works you've got the wire arms that hold the sink in the sand so when you cast these little wires get buried in the sand and your sinker can sit nice and firm in the sand so this is the type of sink you're going to use in a very very strong sea um, but what makes it nice is you can actually set these wires so if you're fishing a sea which is not strong you just loosen the wires a little bit and it'll trip easier so if you're fishing in a sea that hasn't got a lot of current in it you just lift it and it wires trip and it comes in easy right as i said this is a very versatile sinker and it's one of those sinkers that you can use on the beach and in reefs often when i do reef fishing and i spot cast i see an area working there's a lot of white water next to a rock and i want to get my bait in there and i wanted to sit in there i'd use a grapnel sinker to stay in the zone set my wires quite loose so that if the fish picks me up it trips easy comes to the surface doesn't get stuck and i can land my fish on the beaches obviously when the when we've got strong sea conditions this is a sink you want to use it's going to hold you can cast in the zone you want to be and it'll sit there when it comes to sliding which is a very big part of our angling this is the only sink we can use obviously you throw your line out first with a sinker the sinker gets stuck in the sand and then you put your slide bait on and slide it down to the sinker when sliding you normally have a lot of tension in the line so your wires will be set nice and stiff and as i said for sliding this is the only sinker we use these wire grapnel sinkers cast very well there's not a lot of air resistance when you throw them obviously so for long distance casting they do very well fishing in windy conditions not a problem at all and the other very good advantage of this is when you're fishing in reefs with it when you set your wires and they trip when you when you reel in you'll see it's very hard for the sinker to get stuck because it'll just glide over the rocks comes up to the surface easy so for me most probably one of the sinkers i use most in most applications